Our first speaker of the day is Alexei Starovoitov. Hello, and thank you for joining BPF Summit. My name is Alexei Starovoitov. I'm an engineer at Facebook, where BPF is widely used in various parts of the data center software stack. BPF technology wouldn't have had the explosive growth and adoption if it wasn't for, for its key concept of safety. Safety comes in different forms. The program may seek fault, but the system will not crash. Important data on, on disk is not at risk because the hello world did out of bound access. Every program is isolated from the rest of the system. The system is safe. Everyone takes this safety for granted. The kernel programming is different. The kernel is a monolithic blob of code. The kernel is one program written by thousands of programmers at once. You as a kernel developer could be very careful with struct escape-buff memory access, but it's allocated by Kmalloc from, from the common pool of objects with similar sizes. A bug in somebody else's code may force you to spend a day looking for a bug in your code that wasn't there. The kernel modules are no different. The kernel is not protected from bugging module. I think people assume that this is how things are. It's a price to do kernel programming. BPF changed this dogma. It brought safety to kernel programming. BPF gives developers freedom to make mistakes in their code without crushing the kernel. And when the program is polished and bug-free, BPF infrastructure enables developers to keep it safe. Another developer will be making mistakes in their program, and they will not affect your program. That is a different angle of safety. In the early days of BPF, everyone was focused on making sure that the program cannot harm the kernel. That's a very fire job to check for, all memory accesses are within the range, that the program terminates, the loops are bounded, the usage of VPF spin lock helper will not cause programs to deadlock, there is no use of the free when object is freed, the program will not access it through a dangling pointer, that reference counted objects don't leak out of the program when the program does a lookup of a kernel object like socket, it will release it before exiting. Often it is hard to convince the verifier that the program is safe. Nowadays, hundreds, literally hundreds of VPF programs are running at the same time. It became important to isolate one program from another. Having a file descriptor to a VPF program guarantees that the program will not be unloaded. But until recently, there was no way for the user space to make sure that the attached VPF program will keep executing. VPF link was introduced to solve this problem. Having a file descriptor to a BPF link guarantees that the program stays attached to a particular event. But there was another issue. Any user space application running with root permissions could iterate over all BPF links and disconnect programs from events. Cap BPF capability was introduced to solve this problem. It grants unprivileged application and access to BPF system call and isolates programs and links because those file descriptors belong to different user space processes and processes cannot clothe each other descriptors. On one side, CAM BPF provides isolation of one BPF program from another. That's program safety. On the other side, CAM BPF reduces attack surface since an application that uses BPF no longer needs to run with root privileges. That is system security. It is hard to convince the verifier that the program is safe. The programs are typically written in C. LLVM compiler sees the intent of the program. It sees functions, variable, types, foreign while loops. It knows the programmer's intent. The verifier only sees the assembly code. It has to discover function boundaries, basic blocks, contra flow, gra graph, loop induction variables to prove safety. All of it from the assembly code alone. Every optimization pass of, of LLVM is playing broken phone game. Every step obfuscates the user's intent a little bit, which makes the verifier job harder. Here is one example where LLVM makes the verifier struggle. For humans, it's easy to see that register 2 and register 0 contain the same value. 
Hence, the value range discovered by R0 less than zero uh, condition applies to register two as well. The verifier wasn't smart enough to see that. We fixed it. Now it can track ranges of equivalent registers and realize that R2 is within zero to 256 range when the second, after the second condition. This range information is necessary to process R3 plus R2 instruction correctly since loads through R3 can only be allowed if R3 points to a valid memory. Why would compiler do sub to such optimization? Turned out that under register pressure, LLVM greedy register allocator introduced a copy of the register. This kind of transformation is not something we could tell LLVM, don't do this. We had to make the verifier smarter. Here is another example. After this LLVM optimization, the verifier cannot prove the correctness of the code on the left anymore. It understands the range of the variable B, but cannot correlate it back to the range of the variable A. So a valid program gets rejected. It is possible, but quite complex, to make the verifier track the relation between A and B. Fortunately, this optimization is done by the specific pass called instruction combining. We've analyzed under which conditions this optimization is triggering and added an extra pass to LLVM BPF backend that detects this pattern and inserts an optimization barrier, which forces LLVM to avoid this specific instruction combining optimization. In the first example, the mismatch between LLVM and the verifier was resolved by improving the verifier. In the second example, the LLVM was changed. The larger BPF program is, the more likely such coronal cases will appear. If you, as a BPF user, hit such a situation, please don't fight the LLVM and the verifier. Bring it up on BPF at bigger main list, and we will continue making the verifier smarter and continue adjusting LLVM. Not only the verifier has to understand all transformations that LLVM did with C code, it has to detect spectral style attacks in malicious BPF program. Under speculative execution, the index is slow to load the index less than 256 condition could get mispredicted by the CPU and the array de reference will happen out of bounds. The verifier can accurately detect such speculative execution in unprivileged programs and automatically convert them into masked index. This bit of magic ors and shift does not prevent speculative execution. Instead, it steers speculative execution into a safe range. That's where safety blends into security. After many years of gradually improving the verifier smartness, we hit the point where every small improvement means a lot of lines of code. It's challenging because the verifier has to rely on the assembly code alone. We could have taught LLVM to annotate the code, but the verifier would not be able to trust the annotations. We actually store the original C code in BPF ELF binary for introspection and debugging, but it's not used for safety analysis. The breakthrough came with type information. BPF type format was invented to describe types of functions and variables. It's a simple format that encodes struct names, fields and sizes, function names and prototypes, the aggregate types of C language. Now Verifier has the assembly code and types at its disposal to prove safety. There are three main classes of pointers. The first, four main classes of pointers. The first three were natural for the verifier to recognize and validate. The fourth category is very broad. The verifier support was added for struct SOC, socket TCP SOC, but there are lots of other kernel data structures. Clearly, this approach does not scale. BTF type format came to solve this problem. It allows all kernel data structures to be recognized a memory access is proven to be proved for safety. The BPF 
The verifier receives BPF type format from two sources. One comes with BPF program and another comes embedded in VM Linux. Both are checked for correctness and the VM Linux BTF is trusted because it was constructed as a part of the kernel build. In other words, the BPF subsystem knows the kernel internal layout of the data. The user space BTF is not trusted. It could be malicious or could have been compiled for a different kernel. libpf adjusts program instructions after matching program BTF with VM Linux BTF. Then the verifier matches every load and store in assembly with corresponding field and type from BTF. The end result that the pointer the reference is no longer an arbitrary load of four bytes. It's the reference of particular field in the kernel data structure. The verifier sees that the offset 112 in struct escapebuff is the reference of 32-bit LAN field. This BTF-based mechanism provides a new level of safety for BPF program. The verifier performs stricter type checking than the C compiler. For example, BPF, this BPF program is safe from C compiler point of view, but it's not safe for the verifier because arbitrary point recasting can lead to out-of-bound access. The verifier will reject such program. I think BPF flavor of the siloing is a better choice for kernel programming. Soon we will not be talking about how BPF extends the kernel. Instead, we will be talking about pieces of the kernel that were rewritten with BPF because it's a safe choice. Let's take a look at another BPF program. This program will be executed at the end of exec system call. BPRM is a process about to be started. BPF program wants to read environment variables of the process. It's using BPF copy from user helper to access user space data. This access might cause a page fault and the kernel will try to page in the data. The page may not exist and the pointer could be incorrect, but it will not cause set fault or crash. No matter how the BPF program is written, the execution of BPF program is safe. This example program has another interesting part of BPRM VMA memory dereferences. Unlike copy from user that reads user memory, the VMA NMM a kernel point. BPF type format provides the verifier with information about types of each kernel memory access, but these fields in kernel stretches could have been null. Hence, the verifier has to do more work to make sure the loads are safe at runtime. It's doing so with a mechanism similar to C++ exception tables. Just like C++ can throw an exception and unwind the stack, when the kernel page falls, it consults exception table that says which particular load instruction is allowed to fold and how to handle that fault. The verifier builds the table while verifying the program. The end result is BPRM VMA dereference is compiled as normal load instruction. It executes fast as native load. If it faults due to BPRM pointer being null, the fault will be handled gracefully without crushing the kernel. Have you seen kernel panics with null pointer dereferences? Just imagine all kernel code was safe like BPR. Let's take a look at one last example before I conclude this talk. On function entry, the first argument is a pointer to struct XKP metadata, and the second argument is an integer. Because the first program is global, the verifier will try to ensure its safety standalone. It will verify it with the assumption that R1 is a valid pointer and R2 can be any integer. Then later, when they verify in the second program, the verifier only needs to check that the first program is called with valid arguments. The verifier does not need to recheck the program one for specific pointer and integer values that is used in program two. This process is called function by function verification. It drastically speeds up the verification time. Note that it's not available to static functions because LLVM does not adjust type information when it optimizes static functions. BTF type format is a foundation for BPF libraries, for dynamic linking, for building larger applications all written in BPFC. It's important 
point that vanilla C linker does not check function arguments. It only matches names. BPF linker, not ready yet, but it will do a type match. The BPF libraries, BPF dynamic linker, will be safer than C. Maximum attention to safety in all aspects of BPF programming. That's what makes it unique. And that's why BPF is undoubted choice today for kernel extensions and in the future for kernel programming. Thank you very much, Alexei. What an amazing talk and a great example on how much thought and care is going into the security aspect of eBPF. Give a round of applause to Alexei in the Slack channel. Quick reminder, if you have a question for Alexei, please ask in the Slack thread that it was created by, by Joe for each talk. I'll be picking up questions from that thread. So let's uh, see, Alexei, can you hear me for the Q&A? Uh, yes, can awesome. you hear me? Yes, we can all hear you. I have a first question for you from Julia. Do you see a possibility to make the verifier strictness more customizable? I'm thinking about something like BPF-based unicorn applications where maybe the user can change the maximum instruction number allow different access policies to the context and things like that. Okay, uh, very interesting question. Um, before, let me think it through. So, but before I answer the first question, I want to uh, wish uh, David Miller a fast recovery. Um, from the beginning, he was a big supporter of the VPF and without his support, I think like VPF technology wouldn't have grown as big as it is today. Uh, thank you, Dave. Uh, back to the question. I think like in the very far, like we've considered a uh, few things. Like for example, one of the aspects we thought about, like I would call it gradual safety. For example, like not always, like you want to see uh, you, you, you like, Safety is like multidimensional uh, concept, right? So when you're filtering the packets uh, and uh, when you're doing a firewall, for example, you can block all the traffic to the host, right? So just, just by accident, by making a mistake in your program, the host will be not accessible. It pretty much just as bad as it's dead. Some uh, external system will come and reboot the host. So stopping all the traffic is just as bad as uh, crashing the kernel. So do allow this yes we do today like with xdp you just drop all the traffic and that's your host will be dead so allowing certain things in abpf that would that we disallow today is certainly in the cards like how to do it safely and without shooting shooting the users in the foot is a big question yeah i agree and next question is from tristan with strict type checks and robust error checking, I wonder if BPF at some point should become its own language rather than just restricted C. That is definitely true as well. Uh, I think we're already extending the language. So we use C just because that's how we started, but it's not limited to C. BPF traces its own language and it's vastly different than C. But even within C, we already made the changes that uh, like took it beyond what normal C allowed. For example, we have the uh, five or four or six uh, different built-ins um, that the LLVM support that they used for uh, compile once run everywhere extensions where language propagates the types uh, all the way to backend. So it is technically a different language like and a flavor of the C. It has certain things that makes it more restricted than C. At the same time, it allows more than what normal C does. Another example would be, we allow type information to be accessed from the language. Sort of like C++ uh, runtime type information, RTTI. Um, such concepts don't exist in C, but they exist in BPFC. You can just say, what's the type ID of, let's say, struct escape buff? And you will get a number that you can use like later to do like if type of pointer equal to type of the structure, which is pretty cool. Yeah, definitely a very interesting idea. 